Hi everyone. So this is our second lecture of dual nature of radiation matter for class 12 physics. So last day we basically discussed about how the Q by M ratio for electron was discovered, identified uh, by JJ Thompson in 1897. And after that, we discussed how electron emits from a metal plate due to radiation of some light or giving some electric external electric field or heating up the metal plates. And we discussed the work function as well. Uh, after that, we dis uh, I discussed the photoelectric effect, the observation of photoelectric effect, uh, what was observed by Har first Hertz observed the photoelectric effect, Hertz observation, and later on, Lenners and Helvers also <coughs> study some observation. So that part we discussed, but we dis did not discuss about the results they get, and we did not explain those results. So in this lecture, we will totally focus on the photoelectric effect in details. Experimental setup, experimental study, experimental observation, explanation of those observations, everything we will study in this lecture and the next lecture. Uh, photoelectric effect will be discussed in these two lectures. So let me start with the photoelectric effect. Okay. So this is our setup, first setup for photoelectric effect. I zoom it. So this is our source. From here, the light is coming. Now, this is our discharge, evacuated this blast tube, discharge tube. And this uh, C is our metal plate. If we zoom, C is metal plate. A is also metal plate. These two are metal plates. And this is photosensitive plate. That means if we irradiated some photon, uh, not sorry, uh, not photon, because we have not discussed yet the photon. If we irradiated light on it, then we can have the, we can have the flow of electron. Um, in there is a ammeter, so a deflection in ammeter can occur due to the flow of electric current, that means due to flow of the electron. And this is and um, like this C and A are the two metal plates. Okay, these are connected with connected with the external potential. Uh, that means the picture is C and A. These two are metal plates. C and A both are connected with the external potential. Um, external potential is given. Now, after giving that potential, light is irradiated on the C plate, cathode plate, and electron is emitted from this plate. And then due to that potential, electron travels from one C to A, and due to that flow of electron, we, we have a electrical current. We can have the electric current. That means, after all, the, uh, the in, in overall impact, we can see that due to the radiation of light, um, maybe ultraviolet, or maybe the visible range because we discussed in the last class that um, for um, uh, visible light also can give this type of photo photo emission. Um, generally, uh, that depends on the uh, characteristic of the metal. Uh, generally, it's uh, radiation of the ultraviolet radiation, ultraviolet light, is in, um, in ultraviolet UV, ultra. Generally, ultraviolet radiation gives this photo emission, but for some metal, in visible light also we can have this type of uh, photo photo emission. So after that, the electron emits from the cathode plate and sorry, C plate. The C stands here for cathode, but it's not a general notation. That's why I'm not using that terminology. So let C and A, this, this does not mean that always cathode or anode. C plate and A plate, uh, electron emits from C plates because light is radiated on C plate. And that after emitting, uh, after emitted from that plate, uh, because there is an electric field, uh, electron can move to the A plate. And that's why there will be a flow of electron, uh, consequently there will be flow of a current, electric current, we can have the electric current. So this is our total setup of photoelectric effect. We discussed this setup yesterday as well, but we will discuss in this class the results, the observation, the plots we obtain from this uh, ex experiment, from this photoelectric effect experiment. Okay, this experimental study setup. This, this experiment was done by Leonard. This experiment was done by Leonard. Okay. Okay. Now, mm, this electric current, this emission, the current, this is called photoelectric current. Okay. This electric current is called photoelectric current. Okay. We denoted this like, no, no, not I. Okay. This is that pho photoelectric current, not I. Okay. And these electrons are called photoelectrons. We already we already discussed these two things, photoelectron and the photoelectric current. These electrons are called photoelectrons because due to the relation of light, we 
have this uh, we can have this type of flow uh, charge flow. okay now which are the controlling parameters okay by controlling which parameters we can regulate this <coughs> this how this uh, flow of electron the current photo, photo photoelectric current so actually the observation main reg regulating parameters what are what are those regulating parameters first is the intensity okay yes yes okay first intensity let us start with intensity intensity of the radiation or light okay right radiation and light are the both the, we are using the both sense because light is a form of electromagnetic radiation and also it's important this experiment is uh, done by Leonard uh, at 1890, around 1890. Uh, before that, before in 19th century, it was well established that light is light is a wave, totally wave, because Maxwell derived uh, Maxwell explained light as an electromagnetic wave, and considering that, he also estimated the value of the light in the vacuum, and that matches with the experimental result, which is 10 to 10 to 8 meter per second, which proves that in, uh, light, light is an electromagnetic wave. It's a flow of uh, electric field and mutually perpendicular electric field and magnetic field. Okay, let me just show it. Light is a flow of electric. So light is a electromagnetic radiation. Why electromagnetic? Because it's a flow of electric field and magnetic field or electromagnetic wave. Okay, uh, we are familiar with these plots now. Let's say this is x-axis, this is z-axis, this is z-axis. Let's say this is y-axis. No, no, it's not correct. So let me make this y this. No, it's correct. X-axis, y-axis, and z-axis. So light is an electromagnetic radiation just like this. Let's say light propagates in this way. This is the direction of propagation. Okay, direction of propagation. And now so light is propagating through the z direction but in y axis in y direction let's say magnetic field is what magnetic field is present and in x axis in x direction electric field is present so light is flow of electric field and magnetic field right so here electric field electric field e e actually present in the x direction x direction magnetic field b is present in the y direction and light is propagating through z direction that's why it's called mutually perpendicular the direction of the light the, the presence of the electric field and the presence of the magnetic field all are perpendicular to each other and it should be because uh, uh, if we study the actual equation in electrodynamics we can study that that uh, the change of magnetic field generates electric field and the change of electric fields change with respect to time generates the magnetic field and it occurs simultaneously and it always uh, holds a mutually perpendicular relation to each other so this is the this was the visualization for light as a wave in 19th century this theory this height was well established and this is correct because this light is a wave also because uh, because till now till this photoelectric effect we strongly believe that light light is a wave because we we are very much familiar with those uh, um, refraction uh, that reflection refraction this type of features now so this only is possible if light if light is considered as wave and also considering this electromagnetic electromagnetic radiation light as electromagnetic radiation actually establish the speed of the light correctly more or less correctly without with very less error so which proves that light is a wave Okay, so till now, till this experiment, we know that light is a wave. Okay, we have to consider, we have to uh, keep in mind that light is a wave. So, intense, so here that is also radiation. And one more thing we have, I wanted to discuss about light, that is the range, range of the light. As light is a wave, as light is a wave, light, two important things, this is wavelength of light and this is frequency of light these two things are very important for any wave not only light light for all, any wave these two are the main characteristics of that wave because we can relate this with this equation c equals to new lambda right c is the speed of light okay so in, in vacuum obviously in vacuum 
it was c equal to new lambda okay and um, i'm not explaining the wavelength and the frequency because we are very much familiar with these two parameters we so have these two terminology wavelength and the frequency uh, and also and also uh, according to uh, this wavelength of frequency because these are related to each other because c is constant for that one so uh, um, with respect to this uh, frequency or wavelength, we have classified the radius and light in various uh, in, in various parts. Just like we can say, uh, some part is visible, visible range from 400 Armstrong to 700 or 800 Armstrong. We can say like this. This range is visible range. If light has the wavelength in this, then Armstrong unit of uh, Armstrong unit of wavelength length unit. If light has a uh, wavelength in this range, 4,000 to 7,000 amps strong, then we can, visi we can visualize that light. We can see that light. Around us, we can light. So we can see those colors, those light that are in this range. Then only our eyes can sense it. Otherwise, we can't see it. OK. And now, in this part, this is UV, ultraviolet range. This is called IR, IR range, and so on. Uh, in this way, the lambda is increasing, and so in this way, nu is increasing because these are inversely proportional. We can write like this. So, if lambda is increasing, nu will be obviously decreasing. So, nu is increasing in that way, and lambda is increasing in that way. So, these are the features of the light. Okay, this is ultraviolet. This is IR in the visible range. We can have the VGO. We are familiar with that also VGO. So, and again, uh, here is the cost mean far away cosmic uh, gamma x-ray if we classify total this part is x-ray part after I, uh, IR is microwave range after that this radio frequency range so these are the total light okay so in this way frequency increasing in this way wavelength is increasing so these two features of light was known uh, light was characterized by these two facts. The light is the electromagnetic radiation, and these are the parts of the lights actually, uh, depending upon the wavelength of the frequency. So now, come back, coming back to that, our observation part. Okay. <coughs> so first observation, in the, uh, observation by by not observation. This actually we can write the controlling parent controlling parameters right we'll uh, by controlling this parameter we'll observe the result that i want to mean okay first intensity of radiation we can vary this radiation this is the radiation okay second is i'll i'll go through in details okay 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 second is after intensity of radiation it is the frequency because light is a wave we know that frequency of the radiation Okay, so third one is the potential difference between C and A. Okay, and the last one is uh, the characteristics of the metal, that means the nature of the material. These four parameters we can change. We can, in our hand actually, we can say that because we can modulate intensity of radiation according to us. We can change the frequency of the light. The frequency and the uh, wavelength are interdependent, so it means the same. So we are not discussing wavelength because we, uh, we can it is interconvertible because it's a constant. Some explanation of this result by our uh, by the knowledge we already already have considering light as a wave, and we'll see that whether that knowledge is sufficient to explain those results or not. Okay, so first we'll vary the intensity, intensity of the radiation. What does it mean, intensity? Okay, intensity means we can think like that, the power of the light. In a vague way, we can thought like this. Uh, if we increase the brightness of our light, then the intensity will be higher. We can think like that. This is one kind of explanation. 
scientifically we can say that the intensity means the amplitude intensity is the proportional to the amplitude square because here we can see you now this is the amplitude so for any wave for any wave if this is the oh, sorry this is the wave this is the amplitude now this is the amplitude so intensity generally represented by i is proportional to this amplitude square okay so actually it means that the it signifies the energy that wave has higher intensity means the higher amplitude we can think uh, uh, in case of sound if sound is louder that means it's more intense that means that um, for sound, the amplitude of the sound wave is higher so that intensity is directly proportional and uh, not directly proportional is proportional to the uh, amplitude square so we can think that intensity signifies the power quote unquote power of that wave okay or the energy we can think like that as well okay so that that is the intensity so if we uh, now one thing we need, we keep we need to keep in mind that when we uh, we are varying something then we need to fix other parameters we are varying one parameter then we need to fix other parameters as well because here are the four controlling parameters we know these are the four controlling parameters first we are seeing the uh, impact of this first parameter right so that means that we have kept constant the other three controlling parameters if we also vary those parameters then how can we um, how can we study the impact of the first parameter no so to, to study the impact of the first parameter or any parameter we have to keep other parameters constant then only we can identify the role of that parameter in, in, in that particular observation okay so here obviously other parameters that frequency we can write new uh, the potential difference v and the metal characteristic these are kept constant then on and we are varying the intensity that is i let's say okay so intensity is varying intensity of the radiation so what we got our result is like this here is the in intensity of light or radiation we can write anything and here is the photo current or photo electric current okay so this is generally right as i so also current is also written as i but here i am not writing okay so here we can write you know c is for also oh, okay leave it okay and our observation is something like this this is directly proportional mind it after mind it we have kept frequency frequency constant okay for some frequency we are we, we are getting this type of result if we increase the intensity of light the photoelectric current is increasing okay what does this mean okay we have to keep mind this figure okay current is increasing what does it mean it, it means that more number of electron is emitting from the metal because okay uh, we can understand like this what is the current what is the current for you know if consider a metal rod what is the current electron is flowing now that is current that is the current right so we can think current in general current is represented by i so i is equal to q by t if i'm wrong if i'm not wrong i is equal to q by t q means the charge means the time so per unit time on uh, per unit time how, to, how uh, what what is the charge is flowing the flowing the amount of charge is flowing that is i so let's say n number of electron is flowing then it will be n e by t we can write like this e is the charge of electron n is the number of electron and t is the time so i will so we can write that this is the constant and per unit time if we take the per unit time then we can write that i is directly proportional to the number of electron is flowing through that metal rod if the number of electron increased the current will increase okay so here we are getting here 
we are getting the current the, due to this flow of electron is if the number of electron flowing electron increase then the current will increase here we can see that if we increase the intensity of the irradiated light intensity of the light okay the photoelectric current increase that means number of more number of electron is emitting from the metal plate this result signifies that okay but 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 mm, mm, okay okay but we have to we have to keep in mind that the this result is occurring for some certain frequency okay under some certain frequency there is no current there is no photo current photoelectric current we will come into that but let us consider for uv for uv range for uv range when we are getting the current we are getting the photoelectric current then if we change the intensity of light then we can have one linear result linear uh, dependence of photoelectric current with the intensity of the light okay uh, what is it okay okay for everything is discussed now our second part that is the frequency or okay no potential potential difference okay b effect of the potential difference okay where is the potential difference applied potential difference is applied between this here between c and a and now why why this is required we have to understand first c and a is there after radiation of light electrons are emitting from the cathode from c plate okay <clears throat> why are using the cathode because generally it is in negatively charged it is positively charged that's why i am using the word cathode because cathode is the negative charge and anode is the positive charge okay now that's that's why i am repeatedly okay c and a but this mm, potential is not fixed we can make this as well negative this is positive something like that okay generally now we have kept this c is negatively charged a is positively charged so there is a potential difference and that potential difference is v v is the potential difference as there is a potential difference what happens if we keep like this c in minus a in plus when electron emits from the metal plate this electrode will attract that electron because this is negatively charged uh, positively charged and this will repel that's why electron will flow from c to a okay and a and and c will reach the electron will reach to the a plate and then it will flow then it will flow now and then only we will have deflection in our potentiometer and that means we will have the photo current photoelectric current okay so that's why this potential is needed if we if there is no potential then what happens the electron will emit from here and due to some kinetic energy it can travel some distance but uh, not essentially it can travel whole distance and to reach the plate a if electron don't appeal to reach the plate a to the a then there will be no photoelectric current so that is the role of our potential difference here that is capital v potential difference okay so now if we increase the potential difference if we draw like this let's say this is c plate c and this is plate a light is irradiation or irradiating on that so from here electron is emitting and it's going to the a plate a okay so the difference of potential is v if we increase the potential difference okay this is in minus this is in plus it is called actually the emitter plate and this is the collector plate okay okay so mm, the difference of the potential is v now if we increase the potential increase the potential not potential potential difference between these two electrodes what happens the electron will move faster okay because this the this electrode will this electrode will attract more and this electrode will repel more so electron will move faster after uh, emitting from the uh, the c plate it will move to the a plate very fast okay if it is moved very fast then electric current will increase current will increase because again we have to remember the definition 
what was the definition of the current i equals to n e by t okay so we can see that if if it move faster that means it takes less time okay that means by unit time more number of electron will flow n that means i will increase here i is not intensity okay i is the um, that's why it is com confusing here i is the current i c let's say electric and it is the electronic charge so now <clears throat> So now what happens that if, if the electron flows very um, electron flows very fast from C to A, uh, then what happens? Per unit time, more number of electron will flow. That means the electric current current will increase because current is the number of electron flow per unit time. Time is important here as well. Okay. <laughs> so yes, that's why what result we obtain that if we increase the potential difference potential difference then okay again again one thing one thing you have to keep in mind that all other parameters are fixed that means new that means intensity and the metal plate these are fixed these are fixed obviously these are fixed okay so now what happens now if we increase the potential difference it will be faster and the electric current will increase but after a certain value of the potential difference this current will not increase. This current will reach to a maximum limit. After that, it will be constant. After that, if we increase the potential difference, then also uh, there will be no significant increment in the electric current. That is, that means the uh, number of electron reached its maximum limit. That means photoelectric current is now saturated. Okay. So uh, yes. Okay. Yes. Hmm. That, that means that current is called the saturation current. But uh, I have the plot, this one. Yes, like this. Okay, this is the plot. This is the potential difference. V, potential difference. Let first look at this part. Not that part, okay. First look at this part, positive part. This part has to ignore, okay. When the when the potential difference is zero, then also we can see very this plot is very very interesting, very very important. Also, we have to understand this plot, this result. Okay. Now, if um, when the potential difference is zero, that means in that point the potential difference is zero now. So then also we can have some current. I is for intensity. There are three kind of intensity. Okay, we'll come into that. Then, but we can have some finite amount of current. After that, if we increase the potential, if we increase the potential, we can see that this is increased. But after some time, after some time uh, from here, we can think like that. It re it become constant, more or less constant. So this is the our saturation. Saturation current, yeah, first saturated current, but saturation current, okay. Saturation current. After that, the current is not increasing after this potential. So this is the saturation current. This is the upper limit of the current. Okay. <clears throat> now, two things we need to explain. When the potential difference is zero, then also there is a flow of the current. How? Because we discussed now that if there is no potential difference, the electron will not flow. That's correct. That's correct. But, but that is not a necessary condition. If electrons have sufficient kinetic energy, because when electron is emitting from the metal plate, now it has also some kinetic energy. We'll discuss that why the electron will have the kinetic energy, but the electron will have some kinetic energy, and due to that kinetic energy, it can travel the total distance and it can reach to the plate A, and as a consequence, there will be some current. Okay. So that's why there is some current. There also may, may not some current that depending upon the rest of the parameters. Now, these parameters are also important. So that's why here they are getting some current. And after if we increase the poten potential difference, the current is increasing and after certain value it becomes a max, it reaches the maxima. Why? Because it means current means the number of electron is flowing per unit time. Okay. That means it reaches uh, saturation limit means uh, that is the maximum limit. 
okay that means the number maximum number of electron can flow at, at at unit time that is the maximum limit okay that means that the, uh, the electrons are emitting from the metal plate now after the radiation of light that means that, that is the uh, maximum number of electron can emit from the emitter at a particular at a unit time okay <clears throat> at that frequency intensity and the metal uh, depending upon the metal plate metal plate we are keeping constant so we are not considering that we are if we keep the new and i fixed intensity and the frequency fixed at that intensity and the, at that frequency uh, at uh, if we increase the potential difference there will be some there will be some uh, saturation current because after the um, for certain new and new and i certain frequency and certain intensity uh, there is some upper bound of electron can emit uh, uh, emit from that metal plate it's not like that that um, uh, from metal plate infinite number of electrons can come out at a unit time now that depends upon the new and i as new and i is the fixed here so there is a fixed upper bound okay beyond that the emission of electron can't go that means the uh, certain number of electron can emit and there is a higher value um, okay so uh, let's say 100 electrons can emit maximum 100 electron can emit can emit from the metal plate per second okay so after uh, emit up, what happens here why this is increasing now okay from here light is irradiated at that point there is some there is no potential difference light irradiated on metal plate c electron emits and electron travels with with its own kinetic energy to the metal metal plate C, a metal plate A, and as a consequence, there there is a photoelectric current, right? Okay. Now, if we increase the if we increase the potential difference, what happens? The number of the velocity, the, the kinetic energy will increase. Obviously, kinetic energy because this plate will attract the electron more. That's why the uh, speed of electron increase and number of electron per unit time will increase. As a consequence, this will increase, right? But uh, what happens after some time, if we increase the chemical potential as well, uh, sorry, not chemical potential, the potential difference as, uh, as well, then the number of electron emitted from the metal plate is fixed. Now, all electrons are emitted, we can, um, the upper bound has reached. Now, at a time, more than 100 electrons are not being emitted, let's say. So 100 emit, electrons are emitting and anode is uh, attracting those and that electron flowing and we are getting the current. So that's why there is a upper bound. Okay, so that's why after that certain value, it is not increasing, it is not increasing. Okay, so there, so there is a saturation, I think it is understandable, I, I have tried to understand it. Okay, so now we have to look at this negative part. Now let's say we are reversing the gradient. Okay, uh, this has some potential, uh, let's say some V1, and this is the v2 till now what, what v2 is greater than v1 okay so now we are reversing the gradient now we are decreasing the v2 v1 keep keeping fixed we are decreasing the v2 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 and when v2 equals to v1 that means this point there is no potential difference there is uh, though there is some current we have explained that now v2 is less than v1 less than v2 is less than v1 that means that means C, uh, C plate, uh, the electron is attracted at that. Electron is not attracted at all now. Uh, okay, we can think like that. Uh, electrons would flow in, in that direction because the, now the electric field is in, in that way. The potential difference is reversed. So when potential in, when V2 is less than, sorry, when V2 is less than V1, okay, what happens? the flow of electron will be restricted. This will oppose the flow of electron. Till now, when the in, in this positive ray, the positive region, when the potential difference is positive, A will A will attract the electron and C will repel. That means that helps to flow the electron. Okay, now the picture is reversed, totally reversed. We have reversed the potential difference, potential gradient. That means it will try to restrict the flow of the electron. Okay, 
that's why it is the decreasing if the flow of electron decreasing then what happens obviously the speed of the electron will decrease and as a consequence the number of electron per unit time flowing per unit time will be decreased and the electric current will be decreased but after a certain value we can see here in v0 this is the potential difference the minus sign is the direction is in opposite direction that's why it's a minus minus v0 because uh, generally the potential difference is v anode it is not anode va minus vc right va minus vc now va is less than vc now so it should be negative in that way that's why it's, it's negative what happens when it is equals to v0 at some particular potential what happens that the flow of electron totally restricted electron wants to move due to its kinetic energy but its potential gradient restrict the flow as a resultant force that the electron stops that is no net force okay that means at that point the potential the kinetic energy of the electron equals to the potential difference now potential difference is playing against the kinetic energy that is called the stopping potential okay this is the stopping potential when the electric current totally stops because the electron stops the electric electron does not move it does not flow to the a if electron does not flow to the a then there will be no electric current so this is called the stopping potential so we can write ev0 is equal to half m v max square okay this is the kinetic energy this is the potential energy e is the charge of the electron e is the mass of the electron and v max is the maximum maximum velocity of the electron <sighs> because uh, all electrons emitted from the metal plate has not the same same value of the kinetic energy same value of the velocity um, the maximum velocity the electron having the maximum velocity will also be stopped at at this potential then there will be no flow of the electron in this region lots of electron stops the flow of the lots of electron stop having the lower velocity but the velocity having the uh, v, v max highest velocity that is still the kinetic energy of that electron is still um, greater than the, poten the potential applied let's say at that point that's why that electron travels to the a and there is the electric current but at that stopping potential all electron stops if the highest uh velocity the uh, electron with the highest velocity stop that means rest of the electron is already stopped okay so we can write this this is a stopping potential and if we here we can see if we increase the intensity then we can have uh, the more saturation current that means okay if we increase the intensity intensity means the power of the light right that is if we increase the intensity what we have in that the uh, the uh, saturation current increases right here we can see that we have to explain why it is increasing but we have to but we'll try to give some explanation let's see but we can see that stopping potential even fixed stopping potential even fixed for all intensity that means stopping potential does not depend on the intensity of the light okay now we will see the effect of frequency frequency of the radiation that means other constant i um, b and metal these are already constant okay so what we can see now here okay this is the k max in book it is written like k max the maximum kinetic energy it should be in form like this okay for here we are varying the uh, i the intensity now so you can see that if we vary the intensity of the light, the stopping potential will fix. But if we vary the potential uh, frequency, you see that stopping potential will change. We, we need to explain how, how, why. Okay, the frequency of the radiation. So here we can see that this is again the uh, potential difference. V is plotted here, potential difference. And here we can also see this is the our saturation current up. Uh, here after this we can see there is more or less constant this is it is for particular one intensity here we are heading the new here we have we are heading the intensity keeping new fixed new was fixed frequency of the light was fixed that i is fixed now if we change the frequency we can see that the stopping potential changes 
but the intensity uh, as intensity is same for you know, all three cases the saturation current is same so we can say that saturation current saturation current it depends on the intensity of the light from the result what we can conclude we have to explain those and the stopping potential okay retarding potential like retarding potential means the in this way the potential is reversed that means okay the stopping potential is depends on the frequency of the light here we can see that if we if we increase the frequency of the light the stopping potential also increased this result we have to explain why and also this is one observation and another one another observation here i, I need to draw again here is the stopping potential and here is the new right so here the result is like this okay this is for any metal so this is some frequency new zero so we can see if the frequency of the light is less than new zero there is no electric current and there is uh, stopping potential is zero so stopping potential is zero means if the stopping if there is no potential then there will be no current stopping potential means the potential required to stop the electric current okay so if the stopping potential here the stopping potential is zero that means no no electric field is required in reverse direction no electric field is required to stop the current that means that there is no electric current actually zero potential means what there is no potential difference just electron just a light is irradiated and there is no current that means no electron is emitting so if the frequency nu is less than nu zero we can see that there is no emission of the photo electron after that if we increase the frequency of the light stopping potential increased here also we can see that now if frequency is increased in the stopping potential also increased now we have to explain why this observation we have to explain this kind of observation right why these are happening okay also this is for some metal a this is for some metal b so this is the stopping potential for metal b that that depends on metal because we know that we discussed now there are four parameters high intensity frequency and the potential we have discussed by we never discussed the metal the stopping potential is the characteristic of the metal that purely depend on depends on the metal if we change the metal that stopping potential this 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 frequency this frequency is totally depends on the metal this frequency this frequency is called threshold frequency last day we discussed little bit right that means the we, we should give some certain frequency if the frequency of the radiation is less than nu zero if nu is less than nu zero the threshold frequency there is no electric current because if nu is less than nu zero no electron is emitting from the metal plate and that's why as a consequence no electron flows no electron can reach to the metal a metal plate a there is no electric current as a result so this frequency is called threshold frequency and this depends on purely depends on the metal characteristic of the metal if we change the metal this will vary stopping stopping potential is stopping potential depends on two parameter i and d not i only the frequency on 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 this new okay let me clear again if new is less than new zero then there is no uh, there is no electric current so there is no concept of the stopping potential electron is not flowing there is no current so why the stopping potential will arise but if new is if new is greater than new zero that means electron will emit from the metal plate it will travel to the metal plate a there will be current to stop that we need to apply voltage difference in reverse way uh, in opposite direction which repel to repel the flow of electron and after certain value uh, after reaching certain value of the potential difference the kinetic energy of the electron will be balanced by this potential by the potential repulsion and the electron flow of the electron will stop and the electric current will vanish and that potential is the 
dropping potential. If we increase the frequency, then we can see that this stopping potential linearly increase. The linear relation is there. But if there is no electric current, so there is no stopping potential and at all. Now, uh, very less time we have today. Um, but here, uh, the we'll, explanation we'll study next day, how we'll try to give some explanation, but we have to list the result. What result do you obtain? Results first. No? First thing is that from the NCRT group, yeah, this, this part is very much important from here. Okay. The first graph with intensity, this what what does this signify? This signifies that the photoelectric current is linearly proportional with the intensity of the light. Okay. Okay. Next is there there is a saturation current. If we increase the intensity of the light, the saturation current increases. What does it mean? Saturation current, if we increase the first is current is directly proportional to the intensity of when new metal and P constant. Okay. Second is there is a saturation current which is proportional to the not proportional to which depends on saturation current depends on the again intensity when new and metal is fixed okay because saturation current means the v is varying so obviously v is the parameter saturation current means that at saturation when if we increase the potential difference uh, then uh, what we can say that in not the reverse way yeah, in the direction which helps the flow of the electron in the positive direction here no? so it helps to flow the electron so um, that means that uh, after a certain value after a certain point the uh, the electric current reaches its maximum limit okay that is the way i i explain in, in details that in saturation saturation current it depends on the intensity and there is some stopping potential that depends on the frequency. Okay, uh, when if we change in here, if we change the new also, okay, then the, if new also the saturation current remains same. Saturation current will be same. Here also, if we change the intensity, the stopping potential will be same. Okay, so this we have to explain. And another one thing we have to explain that this photoelectric effect, this phenomenon is instantaneous. That means if we radiate the light, it's instantaneously electron emits and we measure the deflection in ammeter. That means it's a very fast process. We also have to explain that. These are the observation. Okay, these are the observation, these are the results we obtain from uh, photoelectric effect, but we have to explain with our knowledge. That it requires, I think, 10 to the power minus 9 second or less. Okay, so in next class, we'll try to explain this by our uh, already known concepts. That's, that is the wave nature of the light, whether that is sufficient to explain or not. We'll see that that is not sufficient. And to explain that, we need to introduce some theory some special kind of theory and that was explained by Einstein and from here we can say that the quantum mechanics started to evolve okay quantum the origin of the uh, quantum mechanics will start into the account <laughs> what can I say in from the next class we will see that to describe this result we need something wired and Einstein thought that okay so for this class I think this is happy soon. Now, in next class, we'll discuss, we'll try to analyze, we'll try to explain the result. First, we'll see that considering the wave nature of the light, we'll not able to explain that. For that, we need to consider some concept called that photon concept. So, uh, using that, we'll discuss the result. And after that, the, the wave particle duality will start for the next class. That part we will study. 
up to that for this class this is sufficient okay